high enough there. Hey guys, welcome back to Hands On Channel. Uh, today, I thought I'd share with you the steps involved to get a engine like this. Uh, this happens to be a 350 Chevrolet or a small block Chevy. It's a Vortec out of a 98 Suburban. Uh, but you can see it's fully dressed. It's got the uh, intake, the he cylinder heads, everything is on it. So this is, this is a long block complete. The engine stand manufacturers will tell you that you should center up with the crankshaft here and try to center your, crank, your uh, engine stand with that. And that's great on a short block that doesn't have cylinder heads on it. But when you put cylinder heads on there, that adds a whole bunch of weight to the top end. So I find that somewhere in this area right here, you try to kind of get in between. Uh, right around here is probably the best spot that I, that that's where I try to shoot for, uh, somewhere in that area. And that'll help you if you have to turn the engine over with the cylinder heads on, you want it to be relatively balanced as you can get it uh, because it'll get top heavy and it can get away from you and hurt you. So you want this thing to be, the weight of this engine to be balanced over the, the center point of this so that when you go to spin in it, you don't get hurt. So uh, what you're gonna need for this obviously is an engine hoist and an engine stand. Uh, I prefer the ones that have two legs out front. As you can see, this one only has one leg. Uh, the reason why is these things get a little tippier this way. You know, so you need to be careful wheeling the thing around. If you hit a rock or hit a crack in the floor or something like that, they can be a little tippy. Uh, the ones that have two legs on them, uh, you know, so instead of the one in the center, it'll have two outboard, like kind of like the cherry picker, but they're straight out. And here in a little while, I've got another one over there in my corner, uh, but I'm currently using it for a short block. Uh, so I wanted to, I borrowed this from my father-in-law. He said he was fixing to sell it. I was like, whoa, hey, wait, let me borrow it first so I can <laughs> get this Vortec engine off my floor here. So let me get set up and we'll show you what you're going to need uh, to do this job. Okay, so here we go. Let's put this spider on there. Uh, on this one, it doesn't appear to have a top or bottom, or at least it doesn't say that, so... Uh, we're going to try to hit this hole, this hole, and the bottom two holes, I think is what we're going to go for. So we'll grab our bolt and our washer, and you kind of have to wash it, watch it on this kind. Uh, the washer needs to kind of sit clear of that little ramped up area there. So we're just going to snug these up for now. We just want to make sure they're snug and the washers are clear of that little lip. Okay. It's nowhere near where I want it right now, but it's okay. I just want to get the bolts in. So now it's time to adjust this thing where we want it. And again, here's the center of the uh, crankshaft and you can see I'm several inches above that. So what we're gonna do is try to snug one up here. A couple of them so that it'll hold there. And I'm just kind of eyeballing into the flat plane here of the top of the intake where the intake manifold sits on the top of the block. Okay, that looks pretty darn good. Uh, so I'm gonna snug these outside ones up. I'm not really gonna tighten them down just yet. Just good and snug. Make sure the washers are clear like I've, like I've stated. Uh, the reason why is because for one, you'll ruin your washer and you run the chance of the thing uh, clunking down on you and slipping and scaring you and possibly breaking a bolt, so. I'm using grade eight bolts here. Uh, it was recommended online. Some, there was some debate about this. People were talking, well, should you use 
grade five, grade eight, what should you use? And the consensus was grade five was probably the better ones, but I couldn't get any grade fives today. All I could get was grade eight, so, and I've used them before, never had a problem with them, but if you wanna be extra safe, get grade five, because although that sounds a little backwards from what you would think, uh, the reason why you do that is that the grade fives have a little bit more flex in them before they break. These grade eights just, they just snap when they go. So everything's looking good. We can go ahead and proceed to tighten everything up. And we want it good and tight because we don't want this thing slipping on the stand. Okay. And I'm keeping my body out from underneath this thing while I'm wrenching on it and reefing on it because if that chain snapped or if the cherry picker this made in China cherry picker that I'm running, if it decided to give up the ghost, I wouldn't want to be underneath it because this thing could cripple you. Okay, so those are all tight. That's looking good. Okay, set all our wrenches aside. Oh man, I got greasy. Okay, so next up, we're gonna slide this guy right in just like that. Hopefully it'll go right on. Yep, I'm gonna have to raise the stand up a little bit, a couple pumps. Okay, yeah, it's trying to go on there on its own there. Awesome. Okay, before we let any pressure off the engine stand here, get, get your, uh, uh, your plug in there, your stop. Get it in position. Almost there, almost got three wheels on the ground. Going really slow and careful. Okay, now three wheels are touching. Now I'm gonna slowly let some of the tension off of this cherry picker. Okay, I saw the line go a little slack there. And go a little more. Okay, and we're gonna leave it like that for a few minutes. Let everything settle in. We're gonna give it some bounce tests, some different things to make sure that when we're working on this engine, there's no possible way it's gonna break and snap and fall over on us because again, you don't wanna get crippled. So anyways, guys, hopefully that helped you out. Uh, I just thought I might share this with you because I had to learn this on my own. And when you follow the engine stands recommended procedures, you'll end up putting that thing center with the, uh, uh, crankshaft on the engine. Problem with that is if it's a long block, when you go to spin in this thing, it will get really top heavy and you'll, you may get really hurt. So be very careful about that. I might even have to raise my plate up just a little bit or lower my engine down just a little bit in the plate so that I'm totally safe to flip this thing over because I'm planning on doing an oil pan gasket and some stuff like that uh, while I have this engine here in the shop on the stand. So guys, appreciate you tuning in. If you don't mind, hit that thumbs up on your way out and share your stories about your, your engine installs and your, uh, you know, one time, I'll tell you a quick one on the way out here. One time I had a stand exactly like this one, a little three prong job here like this. And I thought, you know, that's probably strong enough for me to put it on the back of a flatbed truck, just like that, and drive it, you know, five miles away to my other shop that I had. Oh, and it was, but the problem was is that the whole way when I was going, Either, I can't remember if this part here, I don't think this part bent, it was this part. It was bending as I was going. So I basically ruined that engine stand. Uh, now if I had to put a block of wood or something up underneath the front to support that, but you know, I was young and I wasn't thinking, I thought, oh, it's an engine stand, it'll hold it. But uh, anyways, guys, you wanna be real careful with these things and even rolling them around on a concrete floor like this, uh, these three prong ones can be really dangerous. So I recommend the two prong or the two leg ones out front, uh, that way it has four casters touching the ground. They're a lot safer, a lot more stable platform. So anyways, guys, appreciate you tuning in. Until then, we'll see you next time.